Okay, I'm standing up beside or behind my shop, and uh, I've got some small items on the trailer. Um, some pipe for bollards. It's a, sketch, a six inch schedule 40 galvanized pipe, um, and it isn't very long, what, probably six feet. Um, and then there is some tubing up here, square tubing that's been powder coated. So I laid it down, put it wrapped it kind of in cardboard just so that the powder coating wouldn't get scuff on the trailer as I'm hauling it. I probably, in hindsight, could have gotten all of this stuff in the back of my truck, but um, it's a good shakedown for the trailer. And that's probably what part of this uh, shop update video is gonna be about. Um, let me tell you that uh, on Monday, this is it happens to be Sunday, but last Monday, I had a haul that I had to make. I had to go down to Pennsylvania and I picked up some racking for the guy in Rochester that I do a lot of hauling for. Um, and it turned out to be 22,000 pounds of racking on the trailer. Um, 22,000 pounds of racking on the trailer. Now, I know when I uh, deleted my truck and it increased the horsepower and torque on it, um, if I could feel that clutch slipping at some points in time. But when I got that uh, 22,000 pounds on the trailer and uh, came to the first hill, I had issues. It slipped. So, um, so at one point in time, I wasn't even sure that I was going to make it back with a trailer. <clears throat> but I kind of babied it up the hills and stuff like that and came back and had to, um, I, I got a new clutch. I got a dual disc clutch um, and I put it in the truck. So um, that's part of what the shop update is going to be about. It's going to cover a lot of things, but uh, basically... Uh, that's going to be part of it. It might get lengthy, but um, if you want to skip over some parts and, and hit the parts that you want to see. Okay, I'm back here at the back of my truck. Fuel tank, auxiliary fuel tank. What the issue is, you uh, in another shop update, I told you about uh, installing this vent on the tank. This tank wasn't vented to begin with not really sure how they got ever got a fuel tank rated and it is rated there's a sticker up there without it being vented at first I had thought the fill cap was a vent type fill cap but that wasn't the case so what I did is I pulled this other plug out of here that's used uh, it was intended for a pump <clears throat> I pulled this other plug out of here and um, put a bushing in there with a half inch vent that was on my other uh, auxiliary fuel tank. Mm. What the problem is, um, w with my other auxiliary fuel tank, and I'm talking about the round aluminum one, um, let me shut you up and <laughs> I'll take you in and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the other auxiliary fuel tank. And as you can see, it's round. This is where the vent was, and it's fairly close to the top. But the problem is, or the, the with this tank, this is a fill spot, and it's located slightly down on the radius of the tank. So you could never get fuel above this level right here, which is down. So there was always an air gap in the top of it. <clears throat> I never had the issue that I'm having with that vent with this one. Now let me take you back out and show you the my tank that I have in my truck now the reason why this tank isn't in the truck um, is because it uh, they welded those two stands on I bought the tank this way 
with those stands welded on and I used it for a number of years in my um, my 011 Dodge um, it's 75 gallon or I could get 75 gallons into it uh, but after I put it in my uh, new Dodge for some reason one of the welds uh, cracked where they welded it to the tank and then the tank started leaking um, but let me take you back out and we'll talk about that bent problem. Okay, so this is a bent valve off of the old tank and it's, all it is is a, a half inch ball valve, a ball check of valve. <clears throat> so what happens is that ball in there is normally down allowing atmospheric pressure to get into the top of the tank. So if the tank expands um, due to heat, or contracts as I'm emptying it, uh, uh, filling up my other spare tank, it will allow air pressure to circulate back and forth in between there. Now, it's supposed to work on the principle of, and it did work in my other tank on this principle, is when you get a surge against that ball valve, the ball valve, or that ball slam shut, and it won't allow fuel out of there. So what the issue is here is I, with this tank, I don't have that air gap that I had with the other tank. So I think what is happening, and um, it could be two things that could be wrong with this valve in its present configuration. The valve could be bad. The seat could be bad on that ball valve, ball check valve. Or the thing that could be happening is I'm getting sloshing and it's happening so fast that part, some of the fuel, like again, I don't have that air cushion like I had on the other one. Some of the fuel is getting past the ball before it slams shut and dripping down. And what happens is it drips down and drips onto the exhaust manifold. Um, so now I have to correct this thing. I've got to stop it from doing that. Now, there's a couple of things. I could not fill the tank as full as I do and correct it, but if I've got the tank, I might as well as fill it as full as possible. Um, second thing I could do is get another ball check valve. Uh, vent valve, they're called, because uh, they're probably listed for DOT vent valves for fuel tanks, so instead of a call a ball check valve they call it a, a vent valve <clears throat> the other thing that i'm thinking about doing is sometimes if you put an air gap in there uh, a little air cushion in there between the fuel the fluid level and that ball check valve that that cushion th that space in there takes up fuel um, before uh, so it takes up fuel a space to take up fuel that's surging up there before that ball slams shut and it prevents that thing um, and I want to I think I'm going to try that issue so what, what I'm going to do is probably get a, very, a close uh, half inch nipple like a, a half by one inch reducing fitting um, like a uh, one by two nipple, another one by half reducing fitting, and then put the um, check valve on top of that. So it kind of creates a little air chamber in there to absorb that fuel splash. Um, and let me see if that works. Well, the other thing I was thinking about doing was just extending this hose and going down through and what letting i don't think a lot of fuel is coming out of there i never see wet on it i do see steam coming off of the exhaust manifold that's how i know it was happening um because it is dripping on the exhaust manifold the other thing i could have done is uh, and i do have the hose for it just extend the hose in and run it down through the bottom floor of the box and uh, just let that little bit of fuel drip on the ground so that I keep it away from the exhaust system, but let me see if I can um, fix it by doing that other thing first. Okay, I got the truck in the shop, and as you can see, it's a couple hours later. What I did, 
scatter nipple and a half inch coupling and put on there. Now, you probably think that's a cop out from what I said I was going to do, but what it's a Sunday. I went over to Lowe's because Lowe's is the closest place, and all they didn't have the other things, they didn't have the half by one reducers in black or so. I started thinking about it. I had been thinking about it anyways, but I started thinking about it. This thing leaked very seldom. I mean, there was only a couple of times that I actually saw steam come off of that exhaust pipe. So it didn't leak much. Whenever I got out and checked that hose, there was hardly any uh, fuel there. Um, that's about all there was ever there. So I'm thinking it was barely doing it. So I, what I did, again, it's Sunday. Um, I wouldn't be able to get to a uh, plumbing supply house until tomorrow morning. So what I did is I just grabbed a half inch nipple and a half inch coupling and I'm going to test that and see if that works on it. That might create enough of a air gap in there or absorption chamber to stop that fuel from doing that I'll let you know bring you back okay out here behind the shop and what I just did is undercoated my trailer um, I think I'd showed it to you before I don't know that you can see it but it looks like a crinkly finish, but it's actually just a petroleum-based product. So the crinkly finish is just the way it came out of the gun. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't do the front of the boxes or the side rails or anything like that. Um, just underneath. I, I actually got underneath it with a hose and uh, scrub brush this morning and um, washed all the uh, underside of it off or what I say all of it I mean as much as I could get off of it but um, yeah Actually looks pretty good after it sat for a while. It was hard, you know, I was laying on a creeper on my back and trying to get it. Um, looked pretty good. Again, I didn't do any of the outside surfaces, just the underneath. That's a product right there. Very thick. Um, when it comes out, it's probably a consistency in between grease and um, like gear oil. Okay, I'm just gonna throw this little clip in there. As you probably saw on the bucket, there uh, was amber marked. And after a couple of days, what happened is the decals that are under there, the vinyl stickers kind of turn that amber color. So um, I don't think it's uh, an issue. Uh, they're Again, they're probably vinyl and they, uh, that uh, oil won't absorb into them. It'll probably just wash off and they'll be right white um, if anyone has a concern about that. But um, use the product and have a concern about it. Again, it'll probably wash off. Yeah, I think I've showed this stuff to you, but let me, uh, I'm just going to go back and, so that's the product that I use. Again. I've never used it before, so I'll let you know how it does. I'm going to show you the gun that I use. And here's the gun. Um, it's made by Eastwood. Well, I don't know whether it's made by him, but bought through Eastwood. I actually bought it off the Mac Tool guy. 
<clears throat> but you can get it off of Eastwood site if you uh, wanted one like that. It does both the undercutting like I uh, put on and that um, thicker mm, rubbery, it's not a rubbery stuff, but it's probably a petroleum based stuff, but it's that black thicker stuff. Also does that. Okay, so I'm back over here to the back side of my truck and I just wanted to show you that I painted it. But the other reason I kind of brought you over here was, um, let me just backtrack here a second. Um, it's been a day and I have seen no fuel or traces of fuel in there. But then again, it didn't happen all of the time. So um, you get, let's give it a while, maybe... Um, not the shop update, but the next shop update after this, I'll let you know if anything is leaked out of it. But the other reason that I brought you over here is after I make a video, so sometimes I'll download it to my computer and uh, um, then just watch it to make sure that I didn't say something stupid, it looks good or, um, well, let's not say it looks good. I didn't do something stupid. <clears throat> I noticed when, when I was uh, discussing this thing that I had gone out to Lowe's and bought this thing, I had told you something. Um, I said that I couldn't find that uh, one uh, by half reducing coupling in black. And you may be wondering why I said that. And let me explain something to you after a sip of coffee. I, I don't know whether this is true for uh, fuel oil on a general purpose fuel oil, but let me explain something to you. Um, I was in the fire protection business and we used to install diesel fire pumps all the time, uh, both electric and diesel, but diesel uh, was used if there was ever any doubts about the integrity of the electric supply that could supply a, an electric fire pump, um, they would have to use diesel. Or um, if they didn't have a diesel uh, or a backup generator to supply power to an electric fire pump, they would also be, might be required to have a diesel fire pump. But that's not why I wanted to mention that to you. Par fire protection has a huge code uh, codes that, that guide the installation and, and materials that can be used. And I said black because one of the things in fire protection is you cannot use galvanized pipe in fuel supply lines for diesels. And, and the reason is um, galvanizing is a coating as we all know and sometimes it has tendencies of of coming off flaking off coming off and they did not want the diesel or the fuel lines to be obstructed um, should the coating come off so we were never allowed to use it was a coat never allowed to use galvanized anything in fuel lines and uh, for a, a diesel fire pump. So I, when I go out and look for stuff, I, you know, my entire career was spent in fire protection and, and kind of sometimes when I go out and look for hanger material and stuff like that, I, I just use, pick up stuff that that I know was listed for what fire protection. Um, you, you could only use certain side rod with certain size pipes and you could uh, only use certain types of hanger rings or certain types of uh, beam clamps for the hangers, stuff like that. So I have a tendency of uh, gravitating towards those things because that's where my career was um, just kind of out of instinct not not thinking about it just grabbing it because I know that's what I should have been using 
Um, not necessarily in the real world, but in the fire protection world. Someday, um, the truck, I'm, I'm going to talk about the truck for just a second. <clears throat> I, I um, had been buying uh, a lot of stuff for cleaning, um, waxing, and um, polishing the truck off of a company in California. Um, and there's nothing wrong with them because this is the, where I'm going to go in a little bit of a different direction here. The, the company that I bought the stuff off of in California is called Chemical Guys, and they sell... Um, car care products uh, both to professionals and they have uh, uh, just a regular store where anybody a layperson can buy it but uh, basically I think the company is geared towards selling it towards professional uh, car care actually one of their products is based on the aerospace industry um, a sealant a paint sealant um, it's actually called Jet Seal, um, and it's a sealant, a paint sealant that uh, you can put on it. But that's not why I'm talking about this. I haven't washed a truck in probably mm, over a week because I have a, a kid, and let's call him a kid, a young man, has a detail shop next to me, and he kind or quite frequently comes over here um, he had an issue with something and he wanted my advice on it N not a detailing uh, issue but something well it involved a detailing issue but it was something else involving metal <clears throat> he gave me a product um, one, of, one of the things that you do to a car in preparation for cleaning or waxing and, and waxing is kind of going out of vogue uh, because wax if ever any of you don't know wax doesn't last um, you can buy the best carnauba based wax in the world and uh, wax your car and it looks great but the first time you wash it probably 90% of the wax is gone um, he he brought me a product so what I was going to say one of the things that, to uh, bring paint about uh, back into condition is called clay barring you clay bar paint um, and it used to be done by hand but now they have actually um, buffing wheels that you made out of uh, kind of a synthetic clay that you can do it with so he brought over one of them wheels and a new product that he's been using and this stuff is fantastic and i i don't have any of it i i've told him to get me some of it but you actually I, what i did was i clay barred the truck uh, with that synthetic wheel and then i um i had already washed it i had washed it he came over here and he says i've got something for you to try so I clay bar the truck with a synthetic wheel and then put this product on afterwards. You, you clay bar it with this product. Usually when you clay bar a car, they have a, a filmy water solution that you use to spray on the car to clay bar it with. And um, I actually use this product not only to clay bar the car, but then you... Um, wipe it on and wipe it back off afterwards it when you're drying the car so um, now after you wash it what you do wash it with your normal uh, soap that you wash cars with and then when you go to dry the car you spray the stuff onto the water and uh, dry it off with a towel and the and this stuff gets back on and it's a silica based type of material um, and it it was just amazing the 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 finish on this thing was amazing not only is it amazing but again I haven't washed this truck in over a week and 
it seems like the uh, dirt just uh, rinses off of it with, when it rains or anything. Uh, but I, what I'll do is I'll bring you back and tell you about that when I get it. I again I had him having him uh, get me a gallon of it, and I will uh, show it to you as I'm well. I use it, and uh, uh, maybe you guys could try it for yourself if you're into that sort of things. But anyways, I'll bring you back. Okay. I've got uh, my new truck up on the lift because I'm changing the clutch in it. I've got to put a dual disc clutch in it. It, I knew that I was going to have to do it. As soon as you delete it and increase the horsepower, increase the torque on the on this thing, that stock clutch goes well. <clears throat> I know that it had been, uh, it slipped um, when I had it in a hall tune. So I've always set it back to what is supposed to be a stock tune, but the stock tune is still uh, more horsepower than the original, more horsepower, more torque. Um, so I had to do a haul. Uh, down to Pennsylvania for racks on um, today is uh, Tuesday hang on let me bring you back okay I have no idea where I left off um, I had told you that I had uh, made a haul I guess I, that's where I was made a haul on um, Monday. I, I made the haul Monday and today is Wednesday. Uh, made the haul Monday and um, the trailer was pretty loaded. I had 22,000 pounds of racking on the trailer and um, as soon as I started hauling that, even though I had it in a stock tune, um, the hills, when I started pulling the hills, uh, it, when it started uh, bogging down or, or started loading up, um, it started slipping. And I had to baby it really a lot to get it back. So um, I knew that I had to do it. That was the determining factor in me doing it right away, is that I had to get it up and uh, um, get a clutch and... Uh, replace it so what i did yesterday is uh, bought a clutch from thoroughbred diesel um, south bend dual disc ceramic uh, dual disc i didn't want to go with the organic because the ceramic is much better under intense heat and you do get a lot of heat if you're hauling heavy um, and pulling hills um, so I went with a ceramic uh, dual disc clutch. I'm just waiting for it to show up. It's uh, right now. It's uh, probably around um, eight eight thirty in the morning. Um, it's supposed to be come. It was next day UPS, and it's supposed to del be delivered by ten thirty. Um, grandson is going to come over and give me a hand. What I'll do is I'll film it a little bit. What I've uh, gone through. Um, taking the drive shaft, loosen the drive shaft up both front and back, and the carrier bearing is is loose also. Um, just wait for him to come over. We'll pull that drive shaft out. The cross member that holds the transmission up is all unbolted. All the bolts on the uh, transmission are loose. So the only thing that we got to do now, uh, you have to go up into the truck and pull the stick out from the top. You gotta pull that little console type of thing out around the stick and then uh, you can get to the top bolts on the transmission, pull the stick out and um, then we can, I don't have all, the only transmission jack I've got is for a, a low level transmission jack when i bought the transmission jack i had no idea that i was ever going to have a lift so if i had ever known that i was going to have a lift i would have bought the transmission jack that you can take it out uh, up above and i would never have had to 
other than taking the stick out in that council thing, I would have never even had to lower the train or the uh, the truck back down again. But because I have only got a transmission jack for a lower type uh, uh, floor type model uh, transmission jack, I'm gonna after I get everything done, I'll have to lower it down so that I can at a height and get under it with a creeper to pull the transmission out onto that jack then race it back up, um, pull the flywheel. It gets a new flywheel clutch and everything. Um, so, but what I'll do is I'll show you that as I go along. Okay, so I got the clutch in a timely fashion, but um, this is a, another alignment tool for the things because the one in the box was broken into about four pieces. Um, here is the uh, hydraulics. There's a clutch, throw up bearing, um, throw up bearing yoke. But I'll uh, bring it back when we progress further. <clears throat> yeah, here's that alignment tool. Yeah, exactly four pieces. That's a bolt. Drive shaft's over there. Truck is down. <clears throat> console pieces and the shifter is down there okay transmission out and all we got to do now is get the uh, clutch assembly back off of there and get the flywheel off I'll bring it back here's a clutch place just laid out on the floor um, it's actually the next day my grandson had to go someplace last night and uh, wasn't able to get it done yesterday it's kind of uh, he wanted to be here well we put it back together so um, kind of a learning experience but um, it's killing me being in here and uh, not putting it back together but I think I'm gonna be doing something else let me I'll take you shut you off and take you over in front of the truck just show you the transmission there's the transmission I put that new arm and throw a bearing in it yesterday <laughs> that's the old one down there I'm probably gonna save that clutch flywheel and everything else um, just throw it up there uh, you know, you could probably, I, I can probably turn down that flywheel and uh, um, you could scuff up the pads on that, uh, on that clutch and it'd probably still work for somebody. Um, you're not going to, it would have to be a stock truck though. You couldn't do it in a deleted truck where the horsepower and the torque have increased or where you're hauling stuff with it. But anyways, I'll bring you back when we get back started on it. Okay, so here is uh, parts of the old clutch. It, it's not all together. The flywheel is still over the other side of the shop. But parts of the old clutch. Uh, the new clutch is installed. What we have left to do is uh, put the hydraulic unit in for the new clutch. Now, Southbend provides a, or will provide a upgraded hydraulic system for their dual disc clutch setup well for any clutch setup but they they uh, provide it recommend it with the dual disc clutch setup so we're going to bring the truck back in um today put that back or put that into it okay let's wrap this thing up getting too long here is the old hydraulic unit out of the uh, the existing hydraulic unit, the stock hydraulic unit for the clutch out of it. Now, what I do like about um, the new South Bend clutch is it's adjustable, whereas this one apparently was not, um, or I've never figured out a way of adjusting it. But the new hydraulic clutch that South Bend provides is adjustable. So let me take you out to the truck and we'll talk about two other things which will be brief okay here is the new south bend unit installed in it now you're just seeing the reservoir the reservoir goes down to the 
shaft that comes from the pedal out to the hydraulic cylinder there and then a hose goes down to um, let's call this the master cylinder it, the pedal uh, shaft to a master cylinder uh, hydraulic pressure down to the hydraulic cylinder at the clutch um, okay so in all transparency I gotta tell you I fucked up um, and I'm gonna take you under the truck and show you something okay we're under the truck and it's probably picking up too much light from the sunlight behind it but hopefully you can see it this is a carrier bearing holding the drive shaft and these bolts that are in here are not stock bolts what happened is when I put the drive shaft back in here I just put it got it up in the air and caught these two bolts hand tight and then uh, went about doing something else well I tightened the universals at the transmission and the pumpkin but you know what I forgot to do tighten the bolts that hold this carrier bearing up here now I drove around for a day without the trailer on and no issues. I hooked the trailer up, got to the first star, a stoplight or uh, yeah, stoplight and as soon as I was able to go, I started up and heard a large bang. And I thought something had happened to the uh, clutch. Well it turned out that Again, I had forgotten to tighten the bolts on the carrier bearing and the drive shaft dropped down out of it. Um, I was able to get into a parking lot of a plaza real quickly within 200 feet of where it happened. Got into there and uh, had to come back to the shop and find a couple of bolts that would fit it. Uh, they're 10 millimeter, 1.5 thread pitch got a couple of bolts that I had um, on hand you can see that they've got studs on them but it doesn't matter they're there and uh, got it fixed but I could kick myself in the ass for not paying attention to the small details and going back and double checking everything so anyways that's it for this shop update thanks for watching guys hit that like button subscribe